Hi, it's me Pina Amir and welcome to my channel. So for today, we're going to learn about Malay grammar. It's about sentence construction for kata kerja transitive. But before I begin, for this video, I'm just going to use informal pronunciation. For those of you who's not clear yet, what is informal pronunciation? Please watch my number 53 video, which is about confusing pronunciation. Previously, we learned about vocabs for kata kerja transitive. And this is basically leads to our topic now, how to write correct sentences in Malay. As I mentioned previously also, in Malay, for speaking, we don't really strict on that. Actually, you can just, you know, arrange it. So don't be afraid for speaking. Just say whatever. And it's accepted normally like that. But for writing, especially for formal one, is tricky a bit. There's, a, of course, a rule for that, just like any other languages. So without wasting any more time, we're going to learn about kata kerja transitive. So kata kerja is actually verbs, okay? So this is part one. So kata kerja transitive, these verbs need objects. Objects is actually penyambut. Penyambut is actually from the root word sambut. So penyambut is like when you like throw a ball and then somebody catch it. So you call it catcher, right? But I won't write like that. It's not really, I don't think that's really the way I should translate it. So I just use the Malay one, penyambut, which is noun, okay? So these verbs need objects or penyambut, which are noun. Kata kerja transitive can be changed into passive form. So you have this active form and you can change it into the passive form. And mainly the verbs with the prefix me, as you can see in the vocabs, but it's not everything prefix me, but many like involving with the prefix me and it's like actually the active form. And if you want to change it to the passive form, then you have to change it to prefix D. So from me and then it become D. From the examples I've given, please make sure you pay attention. In case if it's like active sentence, then I put in bracket FA. And if it's like passive one, then I put in bracket FB. And of course, I won't forget about speaking. So for those of you who doesn't want to learn formal Malay in a very strict way, you're just interested for speaking. So you also won't miss out on this lesson. There's also something for you. So remember FA. Formal Malay for active form of sentence and FP, formal Malay for passive form of sentence. And in bracket S is actually for speaking and E, of course, for English. I mean by active form is actually subject and then the verbs and then object. So this is SVO rule, okay? So this is active form, subject, verbs, object. And if it's passive form, then it will be object, verbs, and then subject. Then it become OVS. This is passive rule. So basically, in Malay, that subject we call pembuat. Pembuat. Okay, buat is do. So pembuat is people who doing it. Okay, so that subject. And verb is kata kerja transitive. And object is penyambut. Let's go to the first example. This is formal and active form of sentence. Nini mengetuk pintu. Nini mengetuk pintu. And I have to mention here also, we don't really change our sentences just like English for the indication of present, past and also future. So sometimes our sentence just general one, but for English, I just translate whatever is appropriate. So, formal active form, Nini mengetuk pintu. So, in English, Nini is knocking on the door. So, Nini, the root word, the prefix meng plus the root word ketuk. Ketuk is knock, pintu is door. So, Nini mengetuk pintu. And the passive form of it is, pintu diketuk oleh Nini. When you have the prefix di, then you have oleh. But, Somehow, sometimes people just 
drop that only. It's still accepted but for this one, I just go to really straight one. Pintu diketuk oleh Nini. Now you can see in active form, Nini is subject, mengetuk is verb and pintu is object. SVO but for this one, passive, pintu O diketuk oleh. It's like being knocking by. You know, oleh is by. Being knocked by is verb. Nini is subject. So, O-V-S. But for speaking, we just say Nini ketuk pintu. Nini ketuk pintu. As you notice from this first one, the kata kerja transitive, this verb, they need to exist with the words after that, with the object. With that penyambut, we call it. Otherwise, it's like hanging sentence. Like for this one, you can ask. What are you knocking, you know, if you remove that pintu? So, what are you knocking? So, pintu must exist with mengetuk. So, mengetuk pintu. That's basically the idea. Anyway, we learn again another example. This is formal, active form. Anjing mengejar budak-budak nakal itu. Anjing mengejar budak-budak nakal itu. So, English one. Dog is chasing that naughty children. So, anjing is dog, mengejar is from the word kejar. So, prefix meng plus the root word kejar become mengejar, chasing. Budak-budak, children. Budak is chai and then budak-budak children. Nakal is naughty. Itu is that. That's basically, anjing is the subject. Mengejar is verb. Budak-budak nakal is the object. So, anjing mengejar budak-budak nakal itu as V-O. And what about passive form? Budak-budak nakal itu dikejar oleh anjing. So, budak-budak nakal, that naughty children. So, this is the object. Itu, that, dikejar oleh. So, prefix dikejar and then add the word oleh which means by. Anjing is dog. So, it's like get chased by the dog. So, this one, budak-budak nakal itu, O, dikejar oleh V. And anjing is the subject. So, O-V-S. Anyway, for speaking, we just say anjing kejar budak nakal. For speaking, we don't really pay attention much on like reduplication, budak-budak. We just say budak. If people wanted to know more about it, then they ask how many budak were there. Or other than we say anjing kejar budak nakal, we also say budak nakal kena kejar dengan anjing. Budak nakal kena kejar dengan anjing. Dengan is we, kena kejar is also like being chased. Dengan anjing. Dengan is actually we but it's like oleh by anjing. Next example, formal active form. Mereka memuji Ali. So, mereka is they, memuji. The prefix mem plus the root word puji, compliment. Ali is the name. So, in English, they are complimenting Ali. Mereka memuji Ali. And the formal for passive form is Ali dipuji oleh mereka. Ali dipuji oleh mereka. So, you add the prefix D to the root word puji oleh mereka. The first one is SVO and this one OVS. For passive form, you just inverse it. Okay? And then for speaking, we normally say diorang puji Ali. Instead of we say mereka, we say diorang. So, diorang is actually dia, he or she, plus the word orang. So, he, she, plus orang, become diorang. And this actually means mereka. Or, other than that, we also say Ali kena puji dengan diorang. Ali kena puji dengan diorang. Same sentence structure, just like previous one for speaking. We gonna move on. Basically, we learn about short sentences. Now, I will give longer ones, which have two objects. So, you can learn about different objects. In Malay, we have like object tepat and object CP. Object tepat means exact object. Tepat is exact, right? So, object CC and object tepat. First example here, this is formal and also active form of sentence. Lily menyapu sampah di halaman rumah. So, as you can see, Lily, the subject, menyapu is verb. Sampah is object. Halaman rumah also object. So, in English, is like 
Lily is sweeping the rubbish at the home lawn. That is really direct translate. Basically, Lily is sweeping the yard. That's basically English one, very short. So, menyapu is the prefix men y plus the root word sapu which means sweep. Sampah is rubbish. Halaman is lawn. Rumah is home. So, Lily menyapu sampah di halaman rumah. S-V-O-O. Double O there. And then, I give you a formal Malay and in the passive form, sampah di halaman rumah itu disapu oleh Lily. Sampah di halaman rumah itu disapu oleh Lily. So, sampah objek, halaman rumah also objek, itu that disapu oleh. So, prefix D plus the root word sapu and then you add oleh by Lily. So, sampah di halaman rumah itu disapu oleh Lily. But for speaking, we just say Lily sapu sampah kat halaman rumah. But some people also say Lily sapu sampah kat luar rumah. Lua is outside and sapu is a root word there and cut is actually to replace the word D which means at. So, Lily sapu sampah kat halaman rumah or Lily sapu sampah kat luar rumah. As you can see here, let's play guessing games. Which one is exact object or object tepat and which one is object CP? So, object tepat here is sampah. And object CP is halaman rumah. So, object CP, halaman rumah. Anyway, we move on to the next example. This is formal Malay and is active form of sentence. Ali membelikan kekasihnya sebentuk cincin. Ali membelikan kekasihnya sebentuk cincin. So, in English, Ali bought a ring to his lover. Ali bought a ring to his lover. So, Ali prefix mem plus the root word beli plus the suffix kan. So, membelikan like buying for. Okay. Kekasih is lover. Kekasihnya his lover. Se or satu is one. Bentuk is actually shape. But bentuk also collective noun for cincin. Which is a ring. So, Ali membelikan kekasihnya sebentuk cincin. As you can see here, subject is Ali. Membelikan is verb, kekasihnya is object and sebentuk cincin also object. How we gonna change this formal sentence into passive form? Sebentuk cincin dibelikan oleh Ali kepada kekasihnya. Sebentuk cincin dibelikan oleh Ali kepada kekasihnya. So, sebentuk cincin object, right, dibelikan oleh verb, Ali subject and kepada kekasihnya is object again. So, this one actually, as you can see, this is not really the rule. This is not the same rule like previous one, right? You have to remember, when you change to passive form, as long as dibelikan oleh is in the proper place, then that is correct, okay? So, sebentuk cincin dibelikan oleh Ali kepada kekasihnya. Then you have to add kepada because kepada means to. But for speaking, we just say Ali belikan or Ali beli cincin kat girlfriend dia. Kekasih means lover but we prefer to use the word girlfriend compared to kekasih. So, kekasihnya here, girlfriend dia. Kat is to replace the word kepada. Kat girlfriend dia. We just like to shorten that. So, about belikan, belikan is buying for. Okay, when you have this kind. So, some people say Ali belikan cincin kat girlfriend dia. Some people also say Ali beli cincin kat girlfriend dia. So, which one is object tepat? Which one is object CP? So, object tepat here is kekasihnya. And object CP here is sebentuk cincin. We move on to the last example. Formal and it's an active form of sentence. Puan Nini menghadiahkan anaknya sebuah basikal. Puan Nini menghadiahkan anaknya sebuah basikal. So, Puan Nini is Madam Nini menghadiahkan from the root word hadiah which means present. Anak is son or daughter. Anaknya is her son or her daughter. Sebuah, sesatu, one. Buah is actually fruit but buah also collective noun for bicycle. So, basically in English I translate Madam Nini gave her daughter or her son a bicycle as a gift. 
So, we look at the first one, Madam Nini, is subject. Menghadiahkan is verb. Anaknya is object and sebuah basikal also object. So, how we going to change this into the passive form? Anak puan ini dihadiahkan olehnya sebuah basikal. Anak puan ini dihadiahkan olehnya sebuah basikal. So, anak is son or daughter, right? Anak puan ini, that madam ini son or daughter, dihadiahkan olehnya. Nya here is pronoun for that puan ini. Sebuah basikal. Actually, for speaking, we just say puan ini bagi hadiah basikal ke anak dia. Puan ini bagi hadiah basikal ke anak dia. As simple as that. Kat anak dia, actually kat is we replace the word to which is kepada. So, we shorten kat anak dia, okay? Bagi is give. So, puan ini bagi hadiah basikal ke anak dia. So, objek tepat here is anaknya and objek CP here sebuah basikal. I hope you clear about kata kerja transitif. I guess that's all our lesson for now. Thank you very much for watching me. And if you like my video, please check out my Patreon page so that I can have more time to make more videos. For those of you who support me through this medium, Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. For those of you who's watching me right now, thank you very much. And till we meet again then. Bye.